question for any woodworkers out there. And so there I was, rounding the back of this 56 inch bow. Kind of a prototype in a way, kind of a familiar design, but rounding the back using one of my dog bones, you know, and I still haven't completely did it, using my radius sanding block. A long time. Could have done it with my orbital disc, disc sander, but I, I, I don't want to make the neighbors hate me because that thing is loud. It's just annoying. Zzz. So I'm thinking of adding to my, my, my quiver, as it were, 36 inch stationary belt sander. Plus, you're not going to go through the belts as fast as you go through the, the little discs. I mean, those things, use it, you know, they don't last that long. Stationary belt sander. My question is, for you experienced woodworkers out there that have, you know, a complete workshop, you look at Ryobi, you look at Grizzly, you look at any number of these things that range from a hundred dollars or less up to you know four or five hundred dollars i imagine even beyond for professional level ones are any of them quiet that aren't gonna aggravate people in in this uh this neighborhood and also i've got a friend warpath g at warpath archery he has a ryobi and he's been using it for over 10 years and it's still running strong. I mean, I'm a DeWalt, Milwaukee, Bosch kind of a guy. You know, I'm a tool snob. And Ryobi, I think my wife bought a rechargeable drill, screwdriver kind of thing. You know, it's just, it's just, you don't need to plug it in. Where mine is a, a corded Milwaukee, which is good jump a little bit. I wound up buying a bigger one, a hammer drill, at Harbor Freight for like 80 bucks. And even using little bits, that thing smells like it's burning. It's, you know, it's cheap, but I wasn't impressed with the quality. I am looking at it. I don't want to spend a million dollars on it, but if you have any recommendations, on stationary belt sanders. I would appreciate it. I don't want to just get the cheapest one. I want to get a good one. You know, that's not going to be be loud. Do I have any experience with a stationary belt sander? I do not. I've seen them. That's about it. Never used one. But I can picture, you know, as I'm doing these things, and it's careful. It would be easy to screw them up. I could round the backs on these things so much quicker. I could tiller so much quicker. Now, my stave-made bows, more traditional. You know, draw a knife, farrier's rasp and stuff, but on board bows, all's fair and loving board bows. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So, yeah, that's about it. Going to blow through this. I've got my paddle bow that you've seen rawhide backed and painted. I've got my talisman, and if you haven't, just look at my channel, look, go through the videos for talisman. That one I nailed. Love it. It doesn't represent, you know, a reproduction. It's kind of my interpretation of a bow that's wide, and then it gets skinny needle tips that do not bend. Nailed that one. I nailed, because I took it off of measurements, the, tr the TBBs, Traditional Boyer Bibles, Home Guard. I can't screw that one up because I took it for measurements. My snake bow needs a little bit of work. I'm going to work on that. I've got three of them cut out on my workbench there. Two talisman, four paddle bows, three snake bows. Uh, this one, I like it. The last time I did these things, it was for a camp. Boys and girls summer camp. And so I did... 25 of them, roughed them out, and then the kids, I showed them how to sand and tiller and all that stuff, how to shoot them, how to care of, take care of them, brought tallow so they could rub it in over, you know, heat. But 
I did them up to 64 inches. It depended on the wood anywhere from 58, I believe, to 64 inches, a bunch of them, you know, different lengths and stuff like that. I need to refine it. I need to master it. The little horse ball. I consider this one nailed. This one is finished in its development. Now I just got to finish the other five of them. But yeah, that's about it. Stationary belt sander. That's the question of the day. Anyway, got to get ready. I'm going to go into work early because I'm ordering for Friday and it's going to be a busy weekend and I have to use my magic eight ball to figure out how many watermelons, how many cabbage heads, how many cucumbers, how many everything in the produce department I need to order so we don't run out and I don't have too much that's going to go bad and throw away and figure out what I'm going to have to special out. Got to say that I have been somewhat negative in my approach in my day job. I, I, in many ways it doesn't interest me, but in other ways I could see if you're planning on being a produce manager, which that's what I am right now, there is a certain amount of fascination in it because you have to figure out what do you have to buy to make sure you have enough because they're perishable. You know, it can be somewhat terrifying at times, you know, when you've got a full cooler and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to get rid of this stuff. I overbought what do I do to get rid of it without having a huge loss and how do I it's strategic and, and so if you look at it positively it's kind of interesting it's like a big game of battleship but yeah I am done talking I'm done talking thank you for listening oh and Estelle you know as far as I explained it in the comment but I was talking about how do you join two pieces of wood to create a bow. I almost don't even need a glue joint with those horse bows because they would be sinew backed. And uh, picture this. Picture this. You've got your joint in the center, right? Even if it's just a V, a V splice. Stick them together. It's sinew back, so it's not gonna buckle. The sinew will take up the strength. And also, when I do these things, I'll have a center wrap, and I always have a wrap right here because the sinew goes down over the handle, and you want to stabilize that so it's not going to shrink and pull away. And so basically, the sinew would hold the thing together. Just like the, the bent tab tips that I do, where I put a, a V in it so I can tip them up. Sometimes they break off, and then I just glue them on there. And they're, they're tips. It's at the the most leverage on a bow. And then the sinew goes up and over. You wrap it. And the sinew takes up the, the brunt of the stress on that. And so it's it would be the same way with that V slit. It would be a different matter if it was a self bowl, but it taint. Sinew bat. And I used those pieces that I was going to join to make bows cut them up and use use them for risers for the talisman for the the snake bows and the, the pbs used to be able to buy one in an eighth one and a quarter one inch thick boards um rough cut but since i've gone to the three quarter boards i need to glue risers on them typically i take the board and i cut the end off and then just take that and put it there so it matches grain. But these boards were nominally length. So I have to use a separate piece of oak and then cut them and then glue them on there for risers. Well, now I'm done. Now I'm done. Done.